Dr John Yu is a designated living national treasure. It's perhaps fitting then that we meet him at the new Museum of Chinese in Australia. He was not only the museum's inaugural president, but his own story is one that deserves to be told here. It begins in Nanjing, where he was born in 1934. But when war broke out two years later, his mother decided to leave China with John and his older sister. My sister and I were smuggled out of Nanjing. It, it sounds dramatic, but we were smuggled out. I'm told that we were hidden in baskets covered with laundry. Their destination was Australia, where John's mum had been born. Her father was a Presbyterian minister during the Gold Rush days, and she still had family in Sydney. In fact, John's early life was heavily influenced by the work of his uncle, whom they lived with. That's Joshua, who was the eldest son. Joshua Young Wei was an inner city GP and the first Chinese graduate in medicine from the University of Sydney. I was always aware of the fact that if people couldn't afford to pay him, he didn't charge them. The family spoke English at home, meaning John soon forgot any Chinese he'd learned in Nanjing. And I'm really sorry about that because I tried later on to learn Mandarin and it was extraordinarily difficult. By that stage, John was in his 60s and had developed a love for Chinese ceramics. Very often, there were little poems and things written in Chinese as part of the decoration. I wanted to be able to know what it said. It was the first time I became very conscious of my ethnicity. But his day job kept getting in the way of his Chinese lessons. Like his uncle, John went into medicine and became one of Australia's most respected paediatricians. Kids were really wonderful to deal with because they were always honest with you. John was chief executive of the Royal Alexandra Hospital for Children when the decision was made to shift the hospital to a new site in Sydney's rapidly growing western suburbs. We as a board accepted the only right thing to do was we should move to where the kids lived. John made it his mission to ensure the new children's hospital at Westmead would be anything but a concrete bunker. We needed light, we needed colour, and in the public spaces, we wanted art. John says to this day, his vast collection of artworks helps calm his mind. There were really lots of happy memories with George, who is my partner, he wanted the hospital's young patients to feel equally at ease. And that's how we started the concept of children doing art for the children's hospital. And so in the wards themselves, we use children's art. John was named Australian of the Year in 1996, becoming the first Asian Australian to receive the honour. He'd been nominated by the hospital staff. It was a little bit later that Asian Medicaid had said to me how important that had been because they saw how ethnicity wasn't important when something like this was being decided. But John is very proud of his ethnicity. He says as he's gotten older, he's come to realise his commitment to living a principled life. I think core Chinese values involve loyalty to family, and the importance of things like education and the importance of supporting community. Which brings us to his secret for happiness. John Yu is now in his late 80s and has this advice for people much younger. You should start off in your career doing what you enjoy doing. Don't do it just because it's going to bring you a lot of money. Don't do it as the sole focus of your life. Have other interests and to be as generous as one can to the things that are important to you.